okay so uh, welcome back to my channel and here today we will be uh, looking into something that is uh, very uh, you know like uh, something where I left off and many of my students who, who had been benefited from my CC3220 course are now really you know like contacting me and telling me that in order to continue with the course so I, I have actually start, decided to to continue with the CC3220 course and uh, I hope that it becomes helpful to all of you and uh, okay so here we go so basically in this particular example today we will be seeing uh, something which is called a mailbox now what is a mailbox a mailbox is a very simple kind of uh, application where where you can transfer data from one process to another uh, and that too by using the concept of the postal system so <clears throat> just imagine the postal system and what happens in a postal system you basically write a letter and in in the letter you're going to address to some person so just imagine that the person has some ID instead of name just imagine that the person has some ID and you will just write some data or the data is actually your message and then you're going to seal the, the envelope and you're going to write some address on the onto the data uh, onto the onto the mailbox and you're going to put it into the post box so that's like you're posting the letter now this particular posted letter will be received by the correct person uh, so that particular address will be will be actually like in in normal case the postal delivery system will take care of that but now here it is taken care by the by the by the linking linking pointers which are there in the header so we'll come to the details later now just let now just give me an analogical you know like comparison so that you can understand and uh, the links uh, that's the forward link and the and the previous link uh, will be will will be useful to identify the the data or the packets uh, in the mailbox and this is a very popular use case you know where where some reader process or multiple reader processes can actually gather the information or can actually collect the data uh, from multiple writers or writing processes so basically if you have a framework where you which basically manages the communication between multiple tasks and uh, these tasks will be uh, will be communicating between each other and doesn't matter like you, if the task can be some task may be you know like updating the LCD one of the tasks is getting, getting some sensor data maybe one of the task is handling a HTTP client so all these kind of use cases you will see that this mailbox is a very popular way of com of inter-process communication rather I should say within quotes having said that let me tell you that this is one of the processes in which you can communicate data between two tasks other, pro uh, other methods which are popular are obviously queues and pipes and shared memory so there are a lot of concepts but mailbox still has its own ground to to come to like uh, to to be used and let us see with one particular example okay so <clears throat> in all my examples in all my examples I have always been using uh, the very basic concept of starting with the code which has been provided as the as a basis of the resource explorer so these codes are really good you can start off from here and you can then start modifying according to your own application so what do we see over here here we see that there are some standard headers that is uh, the system and the and the and the XTC module headers which are responsible for giving you the runtime values in the debugging stage and here you have the BIOS header which handles all the kernel and BIOS related activities the task.h has all the definitions for kernel uh, task handling similarly mailbox.h will provide you all the kernel details for mailbox handling okay so now here board.h is basically a header file which is required for your particular board so remember if you're using a launch pad then it's pretty fine because uh, this particular board.h is compatible with all the ti boards which they provide if you are planning to make your own board then you might have to tweak um, this board.h and you have to make your own header file so i will be taking a separate you know session for that so that might help you later uh, well number of messages is like we are basically planning to create an array of 
five messages and these five messages will be identical that means that they will have an ID uh, and some data okay so it will be basically a character data but you can you can always modify that later on according to your requirement so the ID is like the person's name which is provided at the top of the letter and the data or the value is nothing but the content which you're sending through your letter now now let us see that uh, okay so the entire stack size for each task is 512 5 which is 512 bytes over here now remember like each and every message will have uh, its own header and its own body so whatever data you want to send or receive rather you have to take care that this particular length of the header plus data doesn't exceed the maximum length which is permissible for each and every message so that is something that we have to keep in mind when we're sending the data so that's up to the programmer now here we have a message object which is actually a part of the mailbox message object so let me first go into the mailbox message object which is over here so in the mailbox message object you can see that it is basically a data structure which contains one particular element which is called the ELEM and that particular element is nothing but the header now the header if you traverse the more into this particular data structure um, the, the, the data type of this particular ELEM object or rather the variable you can see that it is nothing but it's a kernel mailbox data structure and this data structure is nothing but a volatile pointer which is pointing to the next data in the mailbox and also to the previous so this is some kind of a doubly linked list you can imagine which has a link to the next node and the previous node so uh, that is nothing but the header so the header is nothing but the link between the previous and the next data nodes and the other part is actually the message object so message object contains of two parts that we will see over here so here in between lines 55 to 58 we have basically defined what is the message object now again this is up to you you can you can create any kind of message object you want but here we have a id and along with that there's a value so this particular message object is one of the elements of this data structure and the other is the header so these two together makes this particular data structure which is the mailbox message object data structure now as we go down we see that we have created a particular uh, buffer which is nothing but an array now this particular buffer will be allocated five number of element memory so this particular array has five elements and each of the element has a data type as I said of mailbox message object so what is that so each of these objects or the mailbox message objects will again have a header and a body and inside the body there will be an ID and a data okay so till now it's so good so fine now we go down and we see that uh, there is a handle which is the mailbox handle that we'll see a bit later on and the major part is that we are also creating two stacks each for both the both the tasks that we will be creating right now and what are the name of those tasks to put it very simply we have created one reader task and the other is a writer task now now these two tasks as you have seen in the previous example so if some of you you know might have been might have not been through my previous videos so you could just you know browse through my previous videos to understand that what are these task params and and how the task parameters data structure looks like and what is the stack size and all these things as of now I will be just uh, you know keeping it uh, my focus will would be uh, primarily into the mailbox application side okay so here the board in it the board in it function is called this this particular function initializes your board and the BSP packages and after that we allocate a memory to the task parameters so these task parameters are nothing but some runtime parameters which are which are associated with the task which is actually in context and in that particular task parameters which are in context during the runtime obviously stack size is one of the important parameter another is actually the task which will be used by this particular task so the stack of the task is passed 
in line number 98 and the size of that particular stack is passed in line number 97. So after we have passed all these parameters, what we do is we simply create that particular task. Now there are basically two tasks which has been created as I said, one is a writer task and one is the reader task. So the reader task has task 1 stack and writer task has a task 0 stack. So these are two important things you need to note that reader task and writer task will have their own uh, task stack during runtime and the rest values that is the stack size will be same for both the tasks which is nothing but 512 bytes okay or rather 512 elements I would say because uh, we have created actually an array of task 0 stack and task 1 stack as you can see in line number 79 okay now the most important part is we are constructing the mailbox now to construct a mailbox we know that the mailbox also has some runtime parameters which is mbx params and within so after you've in initialized the memory or the mailbox parameters next you would obviously go into uh, you know loading the different uh, member variables of that particular parameter data structure so obviously mbx params data structure has one member variable which is buff which is nothing but the buffer that the mailbox will actually be using now what is this buffer the mailbox has a memory area associated with it which actually stores all the mailbox items so this is the same buffer as we have created over here so this mailbox buffer we have already created over here of the data type mailbox message object and that has five elements so we are basically passing the pointer to the to do the head I mean rather the head pointer to that particular array and we are type casting it into a void pointer type which is nothing but BTR after that we are also passing the size of the mailbox buffer which is actually 5 multiplied by the size of this particular data structure so if you have a look that mailbox message object has two elements right one is obj and elem so obj again has one int which is two bytes and character has one byte and including padding it would be something around eight bytes or something like that just to understand now elem can can, can be of a different data structure so just to keep it simple maybe we'll take four bytes for that as well so eight and eight for two pointers means that 16 so that 16 bytes uh, of uh, the of the buffer elements multiplied by 5 will give you actually the size of that particular mailbox buffer over here and after that we create the mailbox so mailbox construct api basically creates the mailbox and then from there we have the handle to the mailbox now this handle is nothing but an accessibility uh, variable or an accessibility value or rather an address through which we can actually access this particular mailbox item now the bio starts well after the bio starts you will see that both the reader task and the writer tasks over here they have been made into the same priority we have not mentioned any priority so it doesn't matter in this case the reader and the writer task they are like blocked uh, with one another the writer task is not blocking is is not in blocking mode but Mm, but the reader task is in the blocking mode so the reader task cannot go ahead unless and until the writer task has actually written the value so the reader task here will do what the reader task will capture will try to capture the values from each and every array element of the mailbox buffer and then print it on the screen now let's see what happens in the reader task so in the reader task we create a, an object of uh, message object data type and then we run the loop we run the for loop uh, we iterate the for loop for a for five number of times for each and every element in the mailbox and the main important thing is it is basically calling the mailbox pend api now the mailbox pend api is very interesting because it only tells you that whether the mailbox has been posted properly so it's like if your letter is posted properly then only you are able to open it otherwise if you get an open letter it is considered to be untouchable so here the mailbox pen will try to access a particular through the mailbox handle it will try to access a particular array 
or rather a mailbox buffer uh, element and if that particular buffer element has been posted then the mailbox pend would go ahead to read it otherwise it will block the process or the task by using the um, the define the hash defined value of bios wait forever so this bios wait forever is kind of a timeout value and it specifies the system to get halted or not the system rather the particular task to get halted so say for example if you have five uh, as we see over here we have five mail mailbox items that can be sent so maybe the writer process has completed writing one and two but three and four and five are still due so in that case mailbox pend will actually uh, you know like uh, read the values the id and the and the and the value which is there in one and two uh, elements of the mailbox array but it will not read the rest three because it will be blocked by the mailbox pend system okay so the mailbox pend api will block the reading process to 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 move further if if something like this basically happens then this particular reader task will go out of context after some time once it's slice time or uh, quantum time is over so again when it comes back in the next time slice then maybe it will be able to process it if the, re if, the, if the writer process has completed writing the value in its scheduled time so now let us go to the uh, to the writer process okay one thing let me tell you sorry to sorry I, I forgot that is the mailbox pend functionality uh, you know it'll, if, if it can decode all the five uh, messages that is if the mailbox pend uh, doesn't de doesn't get a blocking function or a blocking condition then it will print the ID over here and the value over here and it will just say that all the messages are received and it will call the BIOS exit. So BIOS exit is basically when the reader process receives all the value and the BIOS is exited or killed. Uh, the writer process is something very interesting because it also creates a temporary message and uh, it, it, it populates the message ID with the iteration number and the value with the iteration number plus the ASCII value of small a. So here we have just taken you know some sample values like ASCII value of small a plus 0 which means a then ASCII value of small a plus 1 which means small b or small letter b. So this way they have uh, like changed the values in each and every array elements or other mailbox elements. So you can you can use your own, val your own value as you want. And then the mailbox post is basically an, a mailbox API which, uh, which checks to see that you know like if if there are any kind of uh, uh, like if there is any kind of free message slots um, which are available uh, before copying the message into the mailbox now mailbox post readies the first task waiting on the mailbox so readies means like it it tries to allocate and it tries to populate and it tries to send to the mailbox buffer now it may so happen that you know your mailbox buffer is full and you are unable to write any more memory so in that case the mailbox post will be not possible and it will return a negative value or maybe a zero value and the process will and this if condition will fail and you will get an error message that mailbox write has failed and it will also tell you which particular id and value has failed otherwise the mailbox post will will like write all the values sequentially in the in the in the, in the mailbox uh, elements and it will return you the values which has been written so this is a system printf where you will be getting all the values in your code composer studio console well in this way it will write all these five values in the buffer and uh, then it will go to a sleep this particular task sleep has been made in order to you know pur purposefully to to give some room uh, for for the reader task to run and decode it so this is a once a one cycle you know once running cycle program where the writer where the writer task writes and the reader decodes and exits the bias but in your specific application scenario and your specific use cases you can you can always you know make make different kind of alterations and modifications and you can you can actually define a much larger uh, 
you know mailbox and you can send data with multiple kind of IDs to different different processes okay so I think uh, that was a very short introduction but a very nice introduction for those who want to start off with mailbox communication between multiple processes and threads so go ahead make your changes try to incorporate your own application use cases and in case if you find that there is some kind of problem there is always a comment window below and definitely if you like this video and if it helps you please do subscribe to my channel and please also click on the bell button thank you very much see you in the next lecture bye bye